Hi all, today we are going to discuss about circuit breaker ratings. So we know that the circuit breaker is designed to make or break the circuit under all operating conditions that is circuit breaker should operate under no load condition either opening or closing similarly under the load condition or full load condition or even under the fault conditions because there is a concept of a recloser so in automatic recloser we have already discussed in our previous lectures in order to maintain the stability of the system auto recloser is generally done because 80 percent of the faults are the transient faults only in practice so but the major duties are imposed on the circuit breaker during the operation of fault conditions only because under fault conditions the current is very high it imposes so many constraints which we have discussed in our previous lectures so the circuit breaker has to perform the following duties during the fault conditions because if it can operate under the fault condition it can operate under any other condition successfully so first one is it must be capable of opening the faulty circuit and breaking the fault current and it must be capable of being closed on the fault because this is for the course of recloser. That means with the fault only we are reclosing your circuit breaker because even though 80% cases your fault are transient faults, remaining 20% are permanent faults. So under fault condition when you are closing your circuit breaker, so at that condition also the arc will come and because of the high value of the fault current, your circuit breaker contacts may melt and get welded permanently or they may damage that is a disadvantage so it should be able to withstand that one also and last one it must be capable of carrying the fault current for a short duration while another circuit breaker in series is clearing the fault because we have discussed the zones of protection so let us assume a fault has happened so let us take for example there is a transmission line there is a bus bar here there is a bus bar here so here there is one circuit breaker here there is one circuit breaker so some fault has happened here so the entire fault current is passing through this one so first the circuit breaker a should open and at the instant before the opening of circuit breaker a b is also carrying the fault current but b should not operate because it is not in the protected zone because if a is not operating for some time then only b should operate or otherwise b should wait for some time until the circuit breaker a is opening so that is the third constraint so accordingly the circuit breaker will have the basic current that are space mentioned are breaking capacity making capacity and the short time capacity so let us see one by one the specifications of your circuit breaker or what are mentioned in the nameplate details so first one is the rated voltage or which is called as which is generally mentioned in the phase value only always in the circuit breaker they are mentioned in the phase value this voltage please remember this one let us take for example for a 220 kV line if you divide per phase value you will get this as roughly 127 kV but generally this rated voltage will be greater than that one the let us assume the rated voltage is mentioned as 142 kV it is always the RMS value please remember this one so as the voltage at any point in the power system is not constant under operating conditions because the load continuous fluctuations will be there so the voltage can be even more than the nominal voltage or what is the specified value of the voltage where it should stay because plus or minus variation will be there that's why the rated voltage is always greater than the nominal voltage example is it is 142 kV for the case of 120 kV 127 kV per phase line or it is a 220 kV line so it is the highest phase to phase system voltage expressed in kV RMS which the circuit breaker can withstand continuously without flash over or failure that is called as the rated voltage then comes the rated frequency rated frequency it is a frequency for which your circuit breaker is designed to operate let us assume if the circuit breaker designed for the 60 hertz cannot operate under 50 hertz we have to make some modifications in the design in order to use it because it is designed for a specific frequency because some conditions will affect then coming the operating sequence because i told you that practice in practice we go for auto recloser and sometimes we don't go for auto recloser so whichever case you want to go for auto recloser a special care should be taken that's why it will be mentioned in the circuit breaker for what purpose it is designed so generally the circuit breaker should be capable of performing certain specific sequence of closing that closing is represented by c and opening is mentioned by o 
and closing followed by opening that is mentioned by CO. That means during the reclose, let us assume the circuit breaker is closed, but still the fault is not cleared. So automatically it should open immediately so that circuit breaker will not damage. That's why it's follow the sequence CO closing followed by opening immediately. Getting this one. So the standard operating sequences, there are two types. One is non-rapid auto reclosing operating sequence. So which is mentioned by O followed by three minutes then CO. That means when the circuit breaker is opened, it cannot be reclosed immediately. We have to wait for three minutes. After three minutes, it can be closed again. So when the circuit breaker is closed, if the fault is still there, anyway, it will open immediately. There is no problem. But once the circuit breaker is opened, we have to leave for three minutes so that it can regain it the required value of the strength, like the temperature will go to the normal value and other parameters. So this type is used for the circuit breakers which are not for auto reclosing type that means under normal operating conditions the cost will be less for these circuit breakers then second type of circuit breakers are there rapid auto reclosing operating sequence so in rapid auto reclosing operating sequence these are used for circuit breakers where we need the auto recloser here the sequence will be o o stands for opening so within 0.3 seconds we can close again that means within 0.3 seconds it can regain it strength back so opening after 0.3 seconds we can go for reclosing reclosing involves closing maybe sometimes followed by opening or if fault is cleared then no problem let us assume again fault is there it has reopened so in that case it cannot be reclosed again immediately after that it should wait for minimum three minutes to again close the circuit breaker that means opening 0.3 seconds closing followed by opening again three minutes closing followed by opening operation so these are used where we want to go for single recloser systems this is particularly used in extra high voltage transmission systems generally transient faults will clear in first recloser only getting this one so now going for rated short circuit breaking capacity so under short circuit conditions what is the maximum current it can break so that is mentioned by this one it is the rms value of the current which the circuit breaker is capable of breaking at a given recovery voltage and under specified conditions specified conditions may be power factor rate of rise of restriking voltage and recovery voltage and other things so earlier days they used to mention this in terms of mva that means breaking capacity used to be mentioned in mva which is a three phase mva which is given by root three times of the nominal system voltage multiplied by the rated breaking current of your system this nominal system voltage is not the phase value because it will be three phase value so then only we will get the three phase right nominal system voltage so otherwise if it is a per phase value you can multiply with three times of phase voltage multiplied by the fault current or the rated breaking current so how the breaking current is calculated so whenever the fault comes we know that initially there will be a dc component also and gradually the dc component because this is the dc component so your ac fault current is floated on this dc component and gradually this dc component will die out with respect to time so you can see that initially the ac component is shifted upwards because of this dc component so gradually it will comes down ac component peak to peak magnitude is same only but because of the dc component it is pushed up like this you can see as gradually the dc component is decreasing because this is the envelope for the dc component so gradually it will go on decaying and final steady state is reached so we know that under the fault conditions immediately circuit breaker will not open because the relay takes some time to operate because the sequence of operations are there that we have already seen in our previous lectures so at the instant of circuit breaker opening let us assume there is some dc component idc and there is some peak value of ac component which i am mentioning by iac so let us take this ac component iac by x and this peak DC component or the DC component at the instant of opening, I am taking by Y. So we can calculate the symmetrical breaking current will be equal to RMS value of this AC component. What is the RMS value of the AC component? Because X is the peak value, it will be X divided by root 2. So there is one more type of current because DC component is also there that is called as asymmetrical breaking current. So asymmetrical breaking current will be RMS value of the total current. So whenever DC is associated with DC, how you calculate the RMS value? We have already seen in basic electrical engineering. So we can calculate by square root of 
RMS value of AC component square plus RMS value of DC component square. For DC RMS value or average value all are the same. So that's why it will be X divided by root 2 whole square plus Y square. Y is the DC component at that instant. Getting this one. So generally this DC component varies from 20 to 65 percent depending on the instant of the contact separation. So in the case of India and Britain, we always go for the symmetrical breaking current, whereas in the case of US, they go for asymmetrical breaking current. That means US mentioned the asymmetrical breaking capacity, but in India and Britain, we go for symmetrical breaking capacity. Getting this one? So now the next one is a rated short circuit making current. This is mentioned in kilo amperes. So, but this symmetrical short circuit making current is always mentioned in the peak value. So, it is the peak value of the current including the DC component during the first half cycle of the current wave after closing of the circuit breaker contacts. So, why we are taking the peak value? Because the, whenever the circuit breaker is closed under the fault conditions, there will be high dynamic electromagnetic forces will be experienced by the contact. So, this dynamic electromagnetic forces, they are proportional to square of the instantaneous current. So, we have to take the maximum value of the effect because under first cycle only, the maximum effect will be there. That's why we are taking the first cycle only because you can see here the fault current it is maximum under the first cycle only. So, we will take this maximum peak value of the current during the first cycle. You can see the current is varying like this. We will take this peak value. Getting this one? So, this peak value will be there because this peak value will include both the DC component as well as AC component. You have to remember that one. So, I am going back to this. It is expressed in terms of kilo amperes for a period. Sorry, we have gone somewhere else, right? Okay. It indicates the ability to withstand the dynamic electromagnetic forces proportional to square of the instantaneous current during the closing of circuit breaker under fault conditions. So, the making current is given by root 2 times because we have to convert the RMS value to peak value multiplied by 1.8 times of symmetrical breaking current. Why this 1.8 is taken? This 1.8 is the factor for accounting for the maximum asymmetry. That means, this out of this 100% is AC component and 80% DC component. So, total 1.8 we have to multiply to account for the asymmetry due to the DC component. So, that much shift will be there. Peak value will reach up to 1.8 times the normal AC component value. So, now the short time current rating. So, it is the RMS value of the current which the circuit breaker can carry in full closed position without damage for a specific time interval. I have told you that when the fault happens in the other zone, even though my circuit breaker is carrying the fault current, it should not operate. It should wait for the other circuit breaker should open. That means it should be able to withstand that fault current. So, how much fault current it can withstand? So, that is given by short time current rating. In olden days, they used to mention this short time current rating by the short circuit current it can carry in kilo amperes and how much time it can carry it. But nowadays, they mention it in terms of the breaking current only. So, in terms of breaking current, how much time it can carry that breaking current successfully. So, that is mentioned in practice nowadays. So, olden days it used to be expressed in terms of kilo amperes for a period of 1 second or 3 second. Nowadays, they directly mention as the time only, either 1 second or 3 second rating. So, it this much time it can withstand the rated value of the breaking current or under the fault conditions. So, it is limited by the thermal capacity only because whenever the fault current is passing, there will be I square R loss in the contacts. So, contacts temperature will rise and they may damage. So, this is mainly limited by the thermal capacity of the contacts. Then comes the last one that is a nominal current rating. So, nominal current rating that means this is the normal value of the current rating. The current which the circuit breaker can carry continuously without the temperature rise of current carrying parts exceeding the specified limits under rated voltage frequency and other specified operating conditions. So, nominal current indicates what is the continuous current rating of your circuit breaker. Generally, this nominal current rating also is mentioned in the RMS value only in kilo amperes. So, we can summarize from here. So, the circuit breaker contacts will be the mentioned in the rated voltage and nominal voltage. Rated voltage will be the continuous 
voltage which it can withstand. Nominal voltage is what is a rated system voltage and how many number of poles are there, whether it is a single pole circuit breaker or three pole circuit breaker that will be mentioned. So after that, rated short circuit breaking capacity, rated short circuit making capacity and nominal current rating. So these things are mentioned in detail and along with this, the rated operating sequence. So whether it can, it is designed for recloser or not, that also will be mentioned in the circuit breaker. So I hope what are the ratings of the circuit breakers are clear to you. So next class onwards, we are going to start different type of circuit breakers. What are the construction advantages and disadvantage of each of the high voltage circuit breakers. So if you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.